Welcome, course takers, to section three, accepting failure in multi-tier applications. In this section, we're really going to look at those traditional three-tier, N-tier architectures that modern web applications use and dissect them and see why they don't necessarily work for cloud. That we'll begin to drive into what a good design for resilience in microservices look like, how you manage state, typical application reliability patterns, and then we'll finish on a video that looks at the application and the microservice architecture that we're going to use for the rest of the course. Typical three-tier application resilience and why it fails in the cloud. So a lot of applications are built with three tiers or N tiers in mind. And that's a perfectly good architecture and it works in Amazon. However, when you start looking at containers and microservices, it starts to fail. So in this video, we're gonna look at what a traditional three-tier architecture looks like how to design it in AWS, and then the challenges it has, and how a microservice architecture can get around some of those challenges. So if you're ready, let's get started. So the first thing to say is three-tier design in AWS is not a bad thing. Depending on your application, if you have a relatively small application or it's a web application, then it's probably a good thing, and you don't need to spend all your effort on building a new application using microservices. So let's look at what good looks like. So here we have our front end, our presentation tier. So we've got a, an application load balancer. We've got an auto scaling group with EC2 instances on private subnets. And this is where our presentation logic sits. We then have that talking to an internal load balancer where we've got our back end services. We're using network load balancers and again, auto scaling groups with EC2 on another set of private subnets. And then finally, we've got our managed RDS instance with our managed DNS name with Amazon looking after the database and the failover. We segment those domains into discrete security domains. We've already got network isolation. We've got auto scaling groups at each of the tiers. So they scale independently of each other. And we've got a managed service. So this is a perfectly good architecture. However, there are some challenges with it. So although you can independently deploy the application at different layers on the whole presentation back-end or business and back-end database are all tightly coupled together so when you release one you typically have to release all of them tracing and understanding the path through the load balancers through the auto scaling groups through the ec2 instances through the managed service can be tricky and there's no readily supportable framework that allows you to get inside the flows and really understand them. And then when you begin to scale out with multiple applications, you're deploying fairly large stacks. So those stacks are unwieldy and uneconomical as well. So you can quite easily rack up a lot of money on Amazon. So this works for virtual machines. But as you begin to deploy containers, you'll begin to understand that this doesn't really scale very well for containers and microservices generally. So let's look at a typical microservice architecture. So we've still got a number of layers. So here we have the user interface layer, then we've got our microservices, then we've got a data store layer and an event streaming layer. Yeah. So most modern applications, web applications, tend to use client-side frameworks, so JavaScript frameworks and libraries. So most of your code for the front end will sit on a CDN or in something like S3, and it will basically make API calls into your microservices layer. So here we have our CDN, CloudFront, and our S3 static store. The client will go through that. They'll talk to either an ALB for path routing, or if we want to do something cleverer with our API and do API development and throttling, we can use API Gateway. But whatever we do, we'll talk to some sort of container platform, in this case, EKS, that's running our microservice. And our microservice, in this case, is a stateful microservice. So it's writing to a data store. So like a cache or a SQL or NoSQL database, but it might also be writing to our event stream as well with Kinesis. There are other ways to get events into our event stream. So we can use DynamoDB streams, but basically every time we write to Kinesis or to DynamoDB, we can trigger another microservice. Now this could be running on a separate container platform. So Lambda, for example, and that's going to do something with that stream. So it might write it to an event store it might trigger an action to do an update or to do something with that event. And then sitting across the entire platform, we've got a number of additional capabilities. 
that don't exist in our three tier application. So we have our service mesh, in this case, Amazon's app mesh, which can do things like tracing, logging, provide network and access policies at a container level. We've got X-Ray, again, doing a lot of tracing functionality. And then we've got a whole set of CI CD tools to deploy and manage our containers and our application code. This is based on the URL link with a little bit of adaption, but this is a typical set of microservices architecture. And you can see very easily that what we have is very clear separation in the same way we do for three tier applications between the user interface and the back end and the business logic. But we have a lot of embedded functionality that we didn't have in our three tier application that allows us to manage and control those microservices and those applications. And ultimately this will translate into allowing developers to develop at different rates, deploy code at different rates and different levels. We've also got the awareness of the networking and we can actually put the networking control right next to the container using a service mesh. And we can trace path all the way from the client, all the way through into and out again through the different AWS services using X-Ray and deploy those. So it allows the developer really to build their services as they want using whatever technology they want. And if they use the existing container platforms within Amazon, then they will get, you know, similar tracing, logging capabilities, CI CD capabilities across the whole application, which generally goes to speed it up.